Here's the word of God. Jesus and his disciples sailed to the Gerasenes land, which is across the lake from Galilee. As soon as Jesus got out of the boat, a certain man met him. The man was from the city and was possessed by demons. For a long time he had lived among the tubes, naked and homeless. When he saw Jesus, he shrieked and fell down before him. Then he shouted, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High? God, I beg you, don't torture me. He said this because Jesus had already commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had taken possession of him, so he would be bound with leg irons and chains and placed under guard. But he would break his restraints, and the demon would force him into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had entered him. They pleaded with him not to order them to go back into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let him go into the pigs. Jesus gave them permission, and the demons left the man and entered the pigs. The herd rushed down the cliff into the lake and was drowned. When those who tended the pigs saw what happened, they ran away and told the story in the city and in the countryside. People came to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, fully dressed and completely sane. They were filled with awe. These people, those people who had actually seen what had happened, told them how the demon-possessed man had been delivered. Then everyone gathered from the region of the Gerasenes and asked Jesus to leave their area because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and returned across the lake. The man from whom the demons had gone had begged to come along with Jesus as one of his disciples. Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell the story of what God has done for you. So he went throughout the city, proclaiming what Jesus had done for him. Let us pray. Come, Holy Ghost, our souls inspire, and lighten us with your celestial fire. For if you are with us, then nothing else matters. And if you are not with us, then nothing else matters. Be with us, we pray, in the name of your beloved. Amen. I have a pastor friend who consistently and continually reminds his congregation that they need to look forward and not backward. Whenever someone shares in the meeting, remember when we used to, and then launches into the story of how it was so wonderful back then, and wasn't it great? I remember those stories. They warm my heart. After they're done telling their story, he thanks them for their story and then says, remember, we're looking forward. We're looking to what we are planning to do in the future, and, and that doesn't mean resurrecting the past. Today's story of the Gerasene demoniac is a healing story where a man is healed of demon possession. Jesus' healings are always amazing, but what struck me this time wasn't the specifics of the healing, but what Jesus said to him at the conclusion of the healing. We read, a man from whom the demons had gone begged to come along with Jesus as one of his disciples. Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell the story of what God has done for you. So he went throughout the city, proclaiming what Jesus had done for him. This statement is made in stark contrast to the verse that immediately precedes it, which reads, Then everyone gathered from the region of the Gerasenes and asked Jesus to leave their area because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and returned across the lake. The Gerasenes weren't ready to absorb what power Jesus had and the healing that Jesus had to offer. They were afraid of his power. 
his power to heal and his power to disrupt an entire ecosystem, an uh, entire financial system. They were overcome with fear. The healed man was likely going to be the only disciple, the only evangelist in the entire area. Though others, like those who tended the pigs, would tell the story of losing the herd and how a man disrupted their livelihood and all that the community had to show for it was one man who was now no longer crazy. This formerly crazy man was going to be the truth teller, the good news teller of Jesus and his healing power. He asked, of course, first to be Jesus' disciple, to stay with Jesus and sit at the feet of the rabbi, so to speak. Uh, and Jesus said, no, you need to sell, stay and tell the story, to be an activist for the sake of the good news. And the fact that this story is still told today implies that he was successful in telling his story because the story that the rest of the community would tell would be about this awful man who ruined our pig herd and the story that he would tell would be of the healing that he experienced. A demon-possessed man turned into a disciple. That means there's hope for us. A member of a previous congregation who worshiped every Sunday um, came to my colleague, uh, the senior pastor, uh, for counseling. Uh, she knew she had some issues and they were being physically manifest in her and she was having some troubles. And um, she came to the senior pastor and together they worked through some of her issues and some of her stories before she went to professional counseling. But she knew that she had been abused in a number of ways in her childhood but as the counseling continued the number of events that had happened that had been buried deep in her memory came forward and she was slowly over the course of a year or more uh, healed of those awful experiences and uh, as as she became more and more healed she wanted to do more and more than just attend on Sunday morning. She wanted to help with all sorts of things. She, she babysat my kids. She worked in the nursery. She taught Sunday school. She just loved helping people know that they were loved by God and that there was nothing they could do about that, that they were loved no matter what. She was a new woman, uh, a new convert, a new um, newly remembering she knew intellectually before, but in her whole body, remembering that she was loved by God. A new convert to the faith, a new member of the church is often the best evangelist. Those who have newly remembered and, corporate in, and incorporated into their being the goodness of God's unconditional love often cannot be stopped. They are the best at sharing the good news because they remember their before. The way they were before they knew about God's love. The way they felt before they knew about God's love. And they are now living in their after. The newly awakened realization that God loves them no matter what. Many of us who've gotten, been in the church for a long time have spiritual amnesia. We tend to forget our before and uh, therefore what current reality is feels like it's been that reality for a long time. We forget how unworthy as we are, we were welcomed. It's hard to remember when it came to us that we realized God's unconditional love and how that changed our lives. This week I got a little reminder um, of what my before was like thanks to a video put out by the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. Uh, it was a video that um, was circulated somewhat on Facebook. Uh, it was produced by the Commission on the Status and Role of Women. The video was a video that was made this year and the statement that opened the video said, we invited male pastors to read real comments made to female pastors 
in the made to female pastors in the North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church. The men had not seen the statements before being filmed. Then clergyman after clergyman read a statement that had been made to women about their ministry. Some of the statements that they read, I personally remember being said to me, like the following. You don't pray as well as our former pastor, but you sure are prettier. You could never be my pastor because you are a woman and you know that God prohibits women from preaching. And finally, if God can use a donkey, I guess that he can use a woman in ministry. One comment that a relative of mine repeatedly made to me was a quote from, I believe his name is Samuel Johnson. You don't need to look it up. Uh, but it was made back in 1956 at the General Conference of the United Methodist Church that was held in Minneapolis. The last time the General Conference was held in Minneapolis uh, before this coming year's 2020 meeting. Uh, and it was the year that the ordination of women was finally um, passed. This statement was made repeatedly to me by my, a relative of mine who was also going into ministry and was male. He said, a woman's preaching is like a dog's walking on his hind legs. It is not done well, but you are surprised to find it done at all. He said it in good fun, and every time he said it, I was expected to laugh. And I usually did, because I loved him as my cousin, but I didn't think it was funny. One of the realizations I came to while watching this video was that it had been a good 15 to 20 years since I had heard any of those comments. And I am grateful that it has been that long ago. Often we look to the past, and we look at what was so good about the good old days and forget about what they were really like and how grateful many of us are that those days are gone. Which is what I imagine the demon-possessed man thought when he was healed from his former life. He was grateful that Jesus, the man who could calm the storm on the Sea of Galilee, could also calm the storm within him. Jesus is able to, as it says in Psalm 65, 7, silence the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the tumult of the peoples. Jesus had silenced the storm just before this story as they were out on the sea. So he silenced the storm, then he silenced the storm in this man. Jesus seemed to attract such people who were in a tumult of sorts. Not the people who seemed to have it all together, but those who had their lives torn apart. Jesus, Jesus told to go, chose to go to the Gerasene region in the first place, a place across the Sea of Galilee that crossed all sorts of boundaries, the geographical boundaries, uh, religious boundaries, uh, cultural boundaries. He chose to go across the sea to this new place on the far side of the Sea of Galilee, entering the region of the Gentiles, which to him as an observant Jewish man was the equivalent of going on the wrong side of the tracks. Jesus is an equal opportunity God for anyone stuck in a storm and needing his calming influence, his extermination of spiritual foes. But not everyone wants to be healed because it often means dying to what was in order to be alive to what is. We are called to die to ourselves so that we can be alive in Christ. Change is strange, and we don't always welcome it. We may be so used to the way things are, and even though they are not healthy, we fear change. What if we had to give up what we like or what we want in order to welcome what is new? What if what is new may include a man who is healed from his illness, but we had gotten so used to being his being ill that we don't know how to relate to him now? We can't prohibit change if it is change for the good, but what if the change doesn't look so good to us in our corner of the world? Change is hard. 
but it might be helped by remembering that the good old days may not have been as good as we tend to remember. Take time to remember all of your before, the way things were before you fully embraced the reality of God's love. Remember that story of your new life in Christ. And remember how God has claimed you and changed you as God's beloved child. And tell anew the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Let us pray. Holy God, you have changed our lives and we are grateful. We remember what we were without you and are grateful to now be with you. Help us to keep telling our story of how we have been changed by your love. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.